I sent the owner some pictures of the tensioner and the oil filter housing and he gave me a thumbs up so we're gonna move forward and do that tensioner and the oil filter housing. I'm gonna take the snorkel and the air box out. I'm gonna do the oil filter housing first. And I'm just gonna use some dice to grab and lift these little plastic rivets. Two T15s. Probably didn't have to take that front, those two plastic rivets off. But that's okay. Because this is what I want. This is back here. This piece. And just pop those back on. Those are those two T15s. And put that back. What was I thinking? One, two. And that releases that. I got some tens over there. Two tens. To take this box out, I do need to loosen up this screw going down to the throttle boot. And I have to pop off the connection for the mass airflow center, which is right here. There's a little tab that you lift up to slide that out. And get a little pick in there and lift that up with some backward tension and you can pop that right out wow, with one hand. Crazy I'm getting good at doing this stuff with one hand recording at the same time. And this will get out and up and a little wiggle and a jiggle and the whole box comes out with snorkel all in one piece. And it really opens it up. This is also for doing the oil filter housing gasket. Wait, that's what we're doing. I'm not doing the tensioner yet. Alright, it would open it up for the tensioner too, I suppose. It gives you a little bit more light in there. Unplug this sensor here. Oil pressure sensor. Just has one of these push clips on it. And you know what? I have to crack that open to let the oil bleed down. So I'm going to do that next. Break the seal so that oil can actually drain down back into the engine. It's less of a mess when you're doing this. So we'll just leave that like that. Probably pull this cap off. It doesn't usually like to come off until I retighten it. Now to remove this housing, we have an E10 here. I have a hidden E10 under the intake manifold, which you're supposed to take the intake manifold off for this repair, but you can sneak it out, which is a good thing because it saves a lot of time. And let's see, we have one here. And let's start with those. And I'm not going to open the cooling system, I'm going to leave that attached. I mean, it is going to make a little bit of a mess, so I'm going to put some towels down. That's why I'm doing this before I do the belt and tensioner. That way I'm not getting oil on the new belt and tensioner. Okay, this is how it's done. You need an E10 quarter inch drive with a swivel. Preferably, I mean, let's see. This is a snap-on. I borrowed this from a friend because I don't have one of this, the small diameter like this, and you need this. I only have a larger one which is a 3 8 and it's not going to work. So i got to pick one of these up. But I'm going to go right in through here, put my hand under the intake, and I can guide that on. And these are usually pretty tight, these bolts, so make sure I'm in the off. Crack that free, like so. So that's a tool you definitely need if you're doing that. This E10 swivel.
Okay. I'm going to use a magnet. Carefully, don't have it fall off and lose it in the engine. Use a cool little magnet and grab that. Thankfully, these are not aluminum screws. So I can finagle that out. Okay, I have this one too. This is not the style with uh, the cooler in front, so this is a little bit easier. Uh, I think on a X3 I have a video also with one with the full cooler, which, I mean, it's the same, same engine. This is a 3 Series E90, and the other one's an X3. I mean, some slight differences, but the meat and potatoes of it are the same. I can actually screw well. Probably leave that loose because like so I can get that bolt on. Okay, keep in mind they're not the same size. This is the one from the intake. This is the one I just removed from the front of the filter housing. The long one there. Now we also have this one down here, see if I can finagle that one out. Alright, I put um, a dirty fender cover down here and some rags. That way it's going to catch some of the oil and coolant, because you do lose oil and coolant when you do this. Not a whole lot, but enough that it can make a mess. If you're trying to keep the belts clean, you could take the belts off first. And I'm going to use a ratcheting E10. So make sure I'm in the off position here and careful not to smash your hands on the electric fan. I just want to loosen that enough so hopefully I can walk it free. Now if you are using a ratcheting E10, you're going to bottom out. against uh, this hose right here, but as you come out, and there goes the coolant, and then you go, you can actually pull it back and that bolt will free up, or your ratchet will be freed up as you actually pull this back. So you can't really lock it in there, which is a good thing, because it would be a bad day, so that's why I usually do this one last. You can see the oil's been running all the way down the front. I'm gonna make sure I clean this up, so. I should put a bucket under there. My well, bucket won't fit, put a pig mat. But I don't want my cat in here eating the antifreeze. It would not be good. My favorite cat. So I just gotta keep an eye out for him. So I'm going to work this one free, and once it's loose, you can loosen it by hand. It's a pretty quick repair when you don't have the extra cooler. It's a pretty long bolt. All right, let me work that free. Oh, actually, I almost have it. There we go. Now. There's my housing, and you can see this is the gasket that fails right here. I gotta force that out with the pick next. Alright, this gasket really sticks in there. There we go. Unfortunately, this is a common leak 
on this particular engine. Thankfully it's actually relatively minor to repair it. Costs are not astronomical. If you don't do it, I've seen oil get onto the belts. The belts actually deteriorate from the oil, so do the coolant hoses. So, and your coolant pump, electric coolant pumps down in this corner over here. And the oil runs down, gets on those hoses, they swell, then everything comes apart, coolant leaks. I've had the belt come apart, get sucked into the front main seal, chew up the front main seal, oil pan needs to be dropped because the belt material actually will get into the pickup of the oil pan. So, if you see this leak, it's not something to neglect or a valve cover leaking. You definitely want to get it done. Alright, I'm just going to put a rag on that and move that out of my way. Here's my sealing surface. I'll clean that up. A lot of oil down on the bottom down there from this thing leaking. And it runs right along this path right here and runs right right to uh, the water pump and the belts and all the things you where you don't want it to be alright so there's some residual there and once again if you watch some of my other vid videos I like to use scotch brake works really good I tried that BMW eraser that they say to use and it doesn't work very well. I want to get all this gasket material out so I have a nice sealing surface. There we go. Does a good job. And it's a good idea to clean off. I'm going to wipe this down. I'm going to take the time to take a rag and run it through all these channels here with a little bit of brake clean to remove all the excess oil from those channels before I put the gasket in. Okay, now that that's clean, I'm going to do the same thing on the ceiling surface down here. Wipe that clean. Take your new gasket. Really can't put it on wrong. And install it first onto the oil filter housing. Like so. And it really, you can feel the difference. I mean, the ridge on this is much higher, obviously, before it, you made it to the side of the cylinder head. And this just comes down. Place it and get those bolts started again. Now I got that bottom one started first. And with that hose in the way, you really are stuck. So I got to pull it back to try to get my ratchet wrench in there. So I can start tightening this. You know what? I should do it from the bottom. It's going to give me more throw from under here. your gasket stays on while you're doing all this. Okay. But you can see that there. And I'm going to lock this in first. I'm not going to tighten it all the way. with it almost bottomed out but still a little bit loose. I'm going to put my top one in. Keep that screwed on so nothing falls in but slide that on like so. And that way you can wiggle everything on. Make sure that nothing's cross threaded. Off 
And that is the Z10. I'm going to bring that down a little bit. Feels good. But not all the way. Now i got to put that tough one in. Using a magnet. Come up under the intake. Grab it with the magnet and direct it into oil filter housing, preferably without dropping it. There we go. Once that's there, you can go through here, like in the beginning. And with your swivel E10, get that one going. time to snug everything up but I like to do like preload first one two and my e torques on the bottom Might be able to use the e torque swivel also at an angle, but I just find this a bit easier. And you want that good and snug. Okay, bottom one's good. Yeah, felt the turn a little bit. Snug that down good and tight. And good and tight. Just double check this bottom one. Oops, dang it, I went the wrong way. too easy. Then you just need to put on the air snorkel. And remember to plug back in your oil pressure switch. It should lock into place. Okay, that's good. That's all good. And take out all my stuff I put in there to catch the oil. Okay, nice and easy to put this back in. Down here, and make sure it pushes into the throttle boot. Just kind of, that's when it all stays together on you. And push this into place so that I'm ready. Wiggle and jiggle back here. Seat that to the air box with the clamp. The clamp fell off, but no big deal. Let's go. Put that back on back there. Make sure to tighten the clamp up. 
and plug in your mass airflow sensor. My gloves had it. Of course it's right in the way. Okay, I have the two tens here. All right, gonna go ahead and tighten these up. Two tens, clamps on, mass airflow sensors plugged in. I have the two more torxes to put in the front snorkel. 